2012 was the year the idea for the Christine sisters was planted. A simple bad comedy, of all things, was the seed to an idea that would come to influence me for the next decade for most of my life. But it wasn't until 2021 that the door to making it a reality began to open. Why? Well, that's what this story is about. It was spring semester, 2021. The newest class I was taking was advanced video production class. There were only two projects, and one immediately grabbed me. A narrative assignment, one where we develop a fictional short film by any means with our respective classmates. I made no secret that I wanted to do something related to this film I'd been developing. I immediately put the word out to everyone, probably a post every couple of weeks at a time. My instructor, Ralph Lumley, was even kind enough to write me a short script to film on my birthday of all times. I was ready, and simply awaited the word for people to join. And waited. And waited. And no one answered. Well, I don't need them anyways. I need to do this. this otherwise, Dad will be disappointed. Okay, maybe, maybe I can, I can start, start filming uh, this day or so. I got work one tonight, goddammit. Uh, listen to my boss talk about him, but his divorce is insane. I hate working with Heather. You gotta do something. Something. Finish up these storyboards, otherwise Dad's gonna be disappointed. Boy, man. Okay. Oh, man, I got a deadline coming. Oh, man, I got a deadline coming. I think I gotta deal with it. Dad's gonna be so disappointed. Boy, man. We need to get, you gotta do something, something, oh, man, what about work, no, 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 oh, I gotta do something, I gotta do something, what am I gonna do, I'm running out of time, I'm gonna do something, gotta do something, gotta do something, think, think, do it for dad, do it for dad, dad, dad's gonna be mad at you, do it, do it something. What are those things? Not so loud. Well, I felt sick as I turned this version in 20 minutes late. <laughs> this is the original version of the short. It was unfinished, rushed, and literally drained me of all the passion for filmmaking. I've refused to show it to anyone, in either in class or even to my family. I even broke down crying in class because I had been so embarrassed by the entire entire experience. If anything, I was ready to give up. I had been working on this film for nearly a decade. Nothing was going to come of it. Maybe it was time to move on and resign myself to a normal life. Probably what Dad would have wanted. But then, one day, me and my dad had a talk. As someone with Asperger's Syndrome, I don't see the world like most people do. People's words can become twisted in my head, and for most of my life, my dad was no exception. What were supposed to be words of advice came across to me as strict rules that I had to follow no matter what. I realize now that none of this was the case at all. I was afraid to leave this little bubble, and it left me... unbalanced. For some reason, I would either do little to nothing if it meant breaking these rules, especially when working in groups, or if I was the leader, I would push everyone away and not listen to anyone. It was this mindset that made me afraid to take risks, made me not want to lead anyone, to turn the original short into... You will both come with me right now. Just try and stop us. Well, that. My father saw what I had put myself into, all culminating in hearing I gave myself an anxiety attack over buying a guitar. That's when he sat me down and told me something that changed my whole perspective on it. Matthew, you have nothing to prove to me. I'm going to support you in whatever you choose to do, no matter what. 
As these words sunk in, my perspective on life changed. This was my life. I was the one in charge of it and nobody else. I could choose who to work with, how I wanted my ideas to go. This was my first step to not just being a better filmmaker, but being a better person. This is not a quickly learned lesson. There are days I still struggle to remember this. I figured that I'd make a film someday, but a lesson like taking control of your life was something that came first. So here was hoping that this change would be the start of something better. Well, as it turned out, it was. About two months later, my college instructor, Ralph Lumley, emailed me about properly filming and completing the short. He had talked about this as the class ended, but I honestly thought that he told me that to make me feel better after everything that happened. Shows how I make snap decisions all the time. But he was serious. His friend had wanted to be involved in immediate production for some time, and my little proof of concept short was right there. So I took a leap I never thought I would have before. I thought maybe we'd do a month of planning. Nothing would come of it, and it would be a nice little learning experience. Well, it was a learning experience, all right. Within three months, we had a full cast, locations, and the best equipment college instructors and students could get their hands on. I was nervous at first, but by the final day of shooting, I felt that I was in the first genuine control of something in my life. I can happily say that my cast and crew, Sam, Lydia, Melanie, Savannah, Caleb, Anthony, and of course Mr. Lumley, were some of the best people I've ever worked with. I'll tell you what, that was a great feeling. Well, what can I say I learned throughout this whole thing? Well, I think the most important thing to take away from this is, learn to stand on your own. When you take control of your own life, the weight of the world will disappear. It'll feel easier working with others. You'll be more confident and comfortable being a leader. You'll be more willing to take risks that you would have never taken before. That's my lesson to you all. So I think the last thing I'll say is, thank you all for listening. And above all, thank you Ralph, thank you Anthony, thank you Sam, Lydia, Melanie, thank you Savannah and Caleb, and finally, thank you Dad. Thank you for encouraging me to be 100% me. Sorry for dragging you into this, Dr. Sandoval. You're just the only one who seems to know what's going on. What the hell were those things? Tell us what you know. Now. They ripped that man in half. Are you sure you did not want to use your powers? Animated purposes. A creature of elemental darkness. Great. How do we kill her? Oh my god. Is that safe? The better question is, why does she want you too so badly? You're slow, you're stupid, but they can hear, so keep it down. Our, our, our powers are stronger now, but she can't stop us both. You were too young to realize how horrible she was. We're not going to be weapons for your war. Don't you dare! Just try and stop us.